Hi guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. So for today's video, I felt like just playing with makeup and I wanted to do a spring pastel makeup look. Pastels seem to be very in for this season, so I wanted to give it a go and kind of give a pastel rainbow eye look for you guys and it's very simple to do and this is such a great time to play with colors that you are afraid to play with because you probably don't have to leave the house, so why not play with colors that you're uncomfortable with because nobody's gonna see anyways and I really love love how the look came out. I think it is so fun for this spring. I mean, I would never wear this look out. It's a really great distraction to create a look like this. So if you would like to see what I used and how I created this look, then just keep watching. So as you can see, we've started with this eye and so far I'm liking where we're going with it. So for my base, I'm using the NYX eyeshadow base and this is just like a white eyeshadow base. I'm searching for better white eyeshadow bases. This isn't my favorite. It's a little bit hard to kind of spread out and apply evenly, but it's gonna work for now. When you're working with pastel shades, I always recommend a white base. It's gonna make the shades stand out that much more. And that's just like the true nature of any pastel shade. You want to use a white base, high quality, affordable, whatever, to get the most out of those types of shades. Put down something white. I'm thinking about trying the e.l.f. putty eye primer in white and see what I think about that. The ABH base is also really good because that's pretty close to white as well. We're going to start off with that. I know it looks crazy, but it'll come together in the end. And I used a Esam W25, by the way, to kind of spread that out. So for the palette, I'm using the Morphe 35i palette, and I rarely use Morphe on my channel, but I did pick this up because I thought it was really fun for the spring, a lot of colors that I didn't have in my collection, and I'm taking a MAC 217, and I'm mixing these two colors right here, and I like this kind of brush because you can just pat and blend at the same time. I'm going to build this color in my inner corner. This palette is powdery, so be sure that you are using padding motion. That also is going to get the pigmentation to be the most when it comes to these shades. Then you use this to kind of blend. And I'm going to take a smaller brush like this, and I want to kind of lighten up this area right here. So I'm going to use this just top shade. This eye is always going to turn out better than the first eye. Work with me. But as you can see, these build pretty nicely. I really, for more, I really don't mind this palette like it's not that bad. Okay, I'm gonna kind of just clean off the brush on my hand since it is a fade We're gonna go into this blue green shade right here and we're gonna pat this into the middle of the lid Pastel shades can be a bit finicky to work with kind of hard to work with that's kind of the nature of how they work so you have to be patient, you have to pat, you have to build. If you want pastel shades in your collection, but you don't want to spend a lot of money on those types of shades, I think this Morphe palette is a very good option. I think if, you know, you're looking for better pastel shades, just for regular everyday use, I would go a little bit more higher quality than Morphe, but for fun, this palette's not bad. And we're going to mix in this blue shade right here. This is a Luxie 229. Blend this out here. Okay, and then I want to kind of take this brush and kind of blend it almost all the way up to the brow bone. So you may need to reapply some colors. That's fine. And now, I didn't do this yet on the other eye, but I'm going to take some of this light peachy pink shade. I'm going to use that right underneath the brow bone. It's going to add a little bit of pink and blend everything out. And next, we're going to dig into this like kind of shimmery light yellow shade. Put that right in the inner corner underneath the brow bone just to give a little punch. We we're going to come back to that palette, but I want to move out to the face makeup now. The process is looking crazy, but that's okay. <laughs> so it will all come together in the end, I promise. I'm going to use the Ola Henriksen Banana Bright Face Primer. I really like this. It adds like a very, very subtle glow to the skin. It feels really good. And honestly, like it kind of tastes really good. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have played with this primer, but I swear I can like taste it on my face and it tastes really good. So work that into the skin. I hate doing my eye makeup first, but every time I do a look where I'm not really sure where it's going, I always like to start off with the eyes because I'm one to definitely remove and take off my makeup. I don't like it. So for foundation, I'm just going to dig into a classic that hasn't been used in a while. This is the Revlon Color Stay Foundation. This is one of my first foundations ever and I've loved it 
better sense. I mean, I don't know that I love it anymore, I suppose. The nostalgia just makes me love it. So I'm going to work this into the skim. Now this foundation, it is a bit dry, but it's one of the most long wear foundations, y'all. I'm telling you, it's a good drugstore foundation if you're looking for longevity. I wouldn't say it looks the prettiest on the skin like a lot of some other drugstore foundations that I've tried, but it's a reliable foundation as far as events go, or if you have a long day or going into work for a long time. If you're worried about like all the extra white that I have, the foundation and concealer are gonna kind of blend that in and make you look human again. I don't know that I love this foundation as much as I used to. I don't really like how it's sitting on my skin. But anyways, I'm going to use the Makeup Revolution Conceal and Define Infinite Concealer. I'm still trying to figure this concealer out. I don't think I like it. I just love Makeup Revolution Concealer so much that I'm like, how do I not like this? But this one, the coverage, like, disappears. So I'm going to put down just this initial layer and it actually, it blends out super nice. We're going to try the technique where you put the concealer under your eyes, but you let it set for like 45 seconds and it's supposed to make the coverage a little bit more thick and full. So we'll see. But as you can see, like as it sits on the skin, it kind of like sinks in and disappears. And you can even see that as it's sitting on my skin right now. So we've set it in a little bit. This really does help with coverage. Now it's going to make the concealer a little bit more hard to blend out but letting the concealer kind of dry under your eyes, it does thicken it and that does help with coverage. So that might be the trick that this concealer needed to get it to work. So I'm going to bronze my face now and I'm going to use the Makeup Forever Pro Fusion Bronzer and this is just the lightest bronzer. I think since we have such a light, ethereal look going on, I don't want to look burnt or orange or anything like that. So I'm just gonna apply this to add a little bit of shape and shading to the face, just on the outside. This is a really nice bronzer. It's not one of my favorites, but for the circumstances when I want just a really light amount of color, I'll use this. I don't know if you can see, but my under eyes are now looking not good. I don't know. So to set the under eyes, I'm gonna use my Pat McGrath under eye setting powder. This is the best under eye setting powder ever. Don't just use it for your Pat McGrath concealer. It'll set down any concealer and do an awesome job. So now we are ready to go back into the palette. And I'm thinking of a few different directions. Like we could totally just play up the blue green vibe or we could make it more springy with some purples and pinks, which I'm definitely leaning towards that. So let's do that. So we're just gonna go right over here into this purple and we're gonna fade that out from the blue so i'm using my po7e again from refer and so put some right in this outer corner right here keeping it a little bit lower so you can see that's adding a fun pop of purple and then bring it down here very important that you blend this purple a little bit onto the outer corner of your lid so that it makes everything transition really smooth. Now we're gonna go into this peachy pink shade right here. I just wiped my brush off on the back of my hand and we're gonna kind of meet the two colors right here. Oh, that's so pretty. Ooh, I love that. I did this crazy look, but you could definitely do a little bit more wearable versions of pastels with this palette. I don't know, I think it's a really neat palette. So I'm happy I bought this, even if it is Morphe, I'm happy about it. Hmm. So for blush, I pulled out this one from Flower Beauty. We're using a lot of affordable products today. And this is the blush in Wild Rose. And I just thought it would complement the eyes really well. I don't want to go too heavy with it. Just like a tap, cause it is a pastel look. It's not a neon look. So I just want a little bit of this color on my cheeks so I just went like that and then we're blending it out I do, do another tap for this cheek I have a meeting for work in an hour finally actually getting back to work work I was like maybe I should do my makeup for that meeting <laughs> I'm not gonna go on to my meeting call looking like this but I love this look. And that blush was the perfect complement. For highlight, we're gonna dig into the Wet n Wild Highlight Bling and we're gonna use this shade right here. Just has a really pretty pink undertone that I think, ooh, okay. Gonna work super well with this look. It's a very, very icy color, so just beware. Let me see how it looks if I just put a touch of the peach. Oh, that kind of tones it down and blends it into the blush a little bit better. I haven't used this highlight yet. I bought it a while ago, but it's quite blending. I would say it's not like the smoothest highlighter, but for a few bucks, I'm not mad at it. And it went well with this look. 
too. I used the Blinged Brushes F17 for that, my new favorite highlight brush. Okay, so I want to add a pop of yellow into my waterline, so I'm gonna use my ColourPop Cream Chell Liner in Sub-Zero. And then I'm going to line my upper lash line with the ColourPop Liquid Eyeliner in Crazy. And this is a navy liner that I think is going to tie everything in the look together. So let me do this really quick. I really want the look to kind of shine through. So I really only use this for lashes just so there's something for the lashes to lay on. So I'm going to pop on some mascara and then I'm going to use Lily Lashes in the style Con and I'll be back. Lashes are on, as you can see. Makes all the difference in the world. So for lips, I'm starting off with the ColourPop Lip Liner in O oh Snap. And I'm just using that to line my lips. And this lip liner goes perfectly with the Bobbi Brown Crushed Liquid Lip in Hippie Shake. I wanted to keep the lips not too bright, not the center of the show, because obviously the eyes are the center of the show. So this color is perfect for that. Boom. Okay, so I'm gonna like get myself together and I'll be back for my last final words. All right, so here is the final look for my fun pastel spring makeup look. I really love how it turned out. I'm very happy with it. So fun. I kind of just felt like sitting down playing with makeup and doing a look I haven't done before. And I've never done a pastel look like this and I'm obsessed. So just to highlight a few key products here, of course, the Morphe 35i was the star of the show. And you know, like since I don't use pastels that often, I'm very happy with this palette. I can see myself, like if I wore pastels regularly, I know there's better quality out there than this, but just for fun and to play with, I'm very happy with this palette and it did work out very well. And with that white base, I mean, the colors are vivid. They were relatively easy to work with, a little bit patchy. It did require a little bit of building up to get the shadow to really show up, but for the most part, this got the job done. So if you're looking to play with some fun pastel colors for the season, I think you will really enjoy this palette. I'm still trying to get this Makeup Revolution concealer to work for me. I think today I've gotten it to work the best, but I think making it sit under my eyes also made it a little bit more thick under the eyes than I would like, but so far this is the best that I've had, and I have to give it to the under eye setting powder because that saved this concealer because it was looking crusty. I also tried the Wet n Wild Halo highlighter for the first time that I purchased last month, and it is quite pretty actually very very pretty very happy with it very great affordable product that is all i have for today's video i hope you guys enjoyed it i think you know if you're at home this is a really fun time to play with some colors that you've never played with because you don't have to go out nobody's gonna see you so it's a fun time to do something different and play with your makeup and that's what i wanted to do so thank you guys so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this video if you aren't subscribed to my channel yet i hope you take the time to do so and i will see you guys in the next one bye guys have a good one